Hello? Hi, honey. It's Mom. Hi, Mom. I just heard on the news that Tim Hortons is coming out with new Boston cream donuts for 50 calories. What? Yeah. Can I get the 50 calorie Boston cream donut, please? Thank you. Thanks a lot. What is up everybody? Will here, welcome to the video. It is a beautiful day outside. I can just smell the wood right now. We are about to head outside in just a minute, but first we gotta do our morning weigh-in. So I wanna see what I'm at. So I have my weigh-ins here and I've been slowly dropping weight and I don't know why. My calories are up. So I just think I'm just training pretty hard. So we'll see. 181. Okay, so I'm down 0.4 pounds yesterday. So I started off this lean gaining phase at 183.2 pounds and now I'm 181. So I'm not gonna change anything yet. You might you might see that and be like, oh shit, I gotta bump the calories up. But I'm actually gonna wait probably like another like week or so. And if it still continues to dip, we're gonna add some more calories in. So now let's go do some hit cardio. It is a lot colder than I thought, but we're about to get warm very, very quick. So I'm gonna challenge you guys to a little bit of a hit workout right here. So it's gonna be, you're gonna do skips, 100 skips, then you're gonna drop the skipping rope. You're gonna do 10 side to side squats. One, two, so five per side there. Then you're gonna grab your push up handles or use your hands if you want to into push up position. Raise one leg, raise the other leg down. That's one, 10 reps. And then since we did 100 uh, skips, then you're gonna do 90. Repeat that process all the way down to 10 skips. See how fast that you guys can do it. So I'm gonna start my watch right now. And uh, if you try it out, comment down below what time you get. Let's get it. So we're just about five minutes in and we're at that 60 skips now, so cardio is gonna start to get a little bit easier, but then the push-ups are gonna start to get harder because you have less rest. So this is where you gotta dig deep. So once you get over the 190, 80, 70 skips, so it, gets, it gets a bit easier. So I finished that 11 minutes, 51 seconds, and just under 15 minutes, close to 100, 100 uh, push-ups, a ton of skips, a ton of squats, great way to start the day, energizes you for the entire day. So gonna head upstairs, if you guys try this out, let me know your time down below. Beat me guys, come on. So decided to be uh, a little bit basic today, make some French toast for breakfast. So I have some whole eggs in here, because breaking news guys, you can make French toast with whole eggs. It doesn't have to be egg whites. I like a little bit of fats in my French toast. So a quick tip when you make this is that you don't just want to weigh the eggs, you also want to weigh your bread. So for this loaf right here, it says it's 60 calories per slice and it's 26 grams. So theoretically, two slices should be 52 grams. So we're gonna weigh it right now and see if that is actually the case. Drop it in. That's 60, 61 grams. That's not 52 grams. So always weigh your bread because if you add, you know, another three more slices, that's a couple hundred calories in the day. Over the course of a week, if you had this every single day, that's pretty much a day on a cut. So just be careful with the bread, weigh it out, not just the eggs. Oh. I just lifted that sizzle. It's money. So while this is finishing up on the other side, I want to show you guys a couple of things. The first one being is I stopped at the PO box this morning 
a subscriber named Michael L L Lotsky? Lotsky? I hope I didn't butcher that, but he sent me a donut plush doll, which is so odd, but I absolutely love it. Also got a bunch of other letters from you guys that I really appreciate, it means the world, so thank you guys so much. Another thing I wanna talk about is my supplement game, because as you guys can notice, it has definitely kind of trimmed down a bit. So I'm only taking pre-workout and protein. So in my videos, I kind of joke a lot about, you know, I take creatine every single day for the past four years, and I don't really even notice a difference. And I was like, yeah, I don't really notice a difference, so why take it? So I stopped taking creatine now for three weeks, and nothing has changed. My workouts are great. I'm strong. I'm stronger than ever in the gym. So, in my opinion, if you don't need to take it, don't take it. Less, especially for supplements, is more. So these are my go-to's. PPK, honestly, my favorite part of the day is drinking this on the way to the gym while listening to some music. So love this stuff. My favorite flavor, mango margarita. Tenny ten to pick some up. Link in the description. And then of course some protein that I honestly don't really see as a supplement. I just see it as like for cooking with it. I love making like, you know protein pancakes, and a bunch of other recipes we're gonna make a little bit later in this video. So these are my two go-tos. Again, I think less is more, especially with supplements. If you don't need them, don't take them. So one bottle down, and we have another one loaded up and ready to go. So the one good thing about French toast, well, there's multiple good things about French toast, one being that it's very delicious, high in protein, a lot of volume of food right here, but the downside is, I just don't know how it's possible to eat it without a stupid amount of syrup, you know? Like, I love Walden Farms, I could probably, I wish I could have it intravenously, but, and I'd be a constantly happy man. Although I wouldn't be happy for that long, because I'd probably die. But yeah, this stuff is delicious. So the macros are 541 calories, 49 grams of protein, 75 grams of carbs, and five grams of fat. You know, I could have added a little bit more eggs, but I do need them for a little bit later. I would typically add around three eggs. Again, don't be scared of the yolk, guys. The yolk is fantastic. It's not all about the egg whites. So let's give it a little taste test. Mm. Got a little bit carried away with the stevia. Oh, it's sweet as hell, man. I was just thinking, if you guys enjoy that hit workout and you guys give it a shot, let me know in the comments if you guys want me to make more of those challenges. Because I do cardio every single day, so I can come up with some small things like every so often challenge you guys, let me know. I think they're super fun, so again, just let me know. All right guys, so we're at the gym right now, about to hop into a push day. So I don't usually like to do push days because I find the chest or the shoulder gets compromised depending on what you start with. Like if I'm gonna start with like bench press, my overhead press just takes a hit. But I'm just gonna do it. I'm starting to do things I don't really love to do because it makes you better doing like overhead dumbbell presses and stuff like that. So we're gonna hop into some incline bench press, three sets, eight to 10 reps. So I'm just warming up right now. I warm up very incrementally. And one thing I've kind of started to do, when I, especially when I warm up, is I try to move the weight as fast as humanly possible. And then when I get to my working weight, it just makes things so much easier. So for the working weight today, we're going to 220 pounds. So last week I got three sets of 10 with 215 pounds. I finally graduated up five more pounds. So it took me like three weeks to get to that point. So be patient with your progress. So 220 pounds, hoping for three sets of eight today. Alright guys, so next up we're gonna hit the shoulders with some behind the neck Smith press. So now I know this one is a little bit risky. Not many people can do it safely, but I like to do it, I can do it safely and it feels good for me. So if you're gonna follow along with this workout, maybe switch it up to just straight standing overhead press, dumbbell shoulder press, even doing it on the Smith in front of you, not behind your neck. So I'm not gonna really push it too close to failure because you are in a very compromised position. So three sets, 10 to 12 reps, gonna keep it nice and clean and pretty quick. Okay guys, so I have a question for you all because I've been getting roasted on my past couple of videos about my armpit hair. And I didn't know 
that guys are supposed to shave their armpit hairs. I thought that was like literally like if you're about to compete in a bodybuilding show. So I haven't shaved mine, but I'm getting absolutely roasted. I've like grown up my whole life, and that's not something that I've ever been told to do. So what's your opinions on that? Comment down below, I'm very curious. I love my armpits. See, this is one of those exercises that you know I won't push as close to failure as the other ones again because you're behind the neck, so I'll never really go like RP, you know, 10 or anything like that because it's just not worth the risk. Okay, so just wrapped up behind the neck Smith press. So now we're gonna move back to the chest and do some flat dumbbell press. So this is kind of what I was saying that you know, one thing is gonna take a hit, because usually I could do flat dumbbell press pretty easily with 100 pounds, but since I just fatigue my shoulders, it's gonna be a lot harder with the same weight. So that's why I don't like doing it, but we're gonna do it anyway. See, that was only eight reps there. Shit. All right, so that was the chest. And now we're gonna move on to some lateral raises. So uh, with uh, some of like my smaller, more accessory movements, I'll give myself some free exercises every single week. So on one of my uh, back and biceps days, my pull days, I have a free bicep exercise. And then today I have a free lateral raise exercise. So if I ever watch something on YouTube or whatever it may be, and I wanna try it, it gives me the opportunity to try it. Because if you just have this program, where you do the same exercises all the time. It gets kind of boring. So by doing this, it has a little bit of a flare. So I just make sure to do three sets, 12 to 15 reps of a lateral raise of choice. So we're slowly gonna pyramid up in weight. So start with the 30s. Go 35s, see how that feels, and go to the 40s, and probably finish off with a drop set. I love doing drop sets with lateral raises. So just do like a double drop set, finish off with some partials. You came and came and raise your arms. All right guys, so we're on to the last exercise of the day. We're gonna be doing a super set here with the cable machine. So we're gonna go cable flies, three sets, 12 to 15, and then we're gonna spin it around, grab the uh, pulleys, and then do tricep extensions, three sets, 12 to 15, and then we get to go home. So that was set one done. So for the cable flies, I like to do a little bit of a scooping motion and finish with my palms facing up as opposed to just kind of going like this. You'll notice when you come back and you kind of scoop like that and squeeze palm facing the ceiling, you notice a bigger contraction in the chest. Okay, so that was the push workout. The way I see this is that that was one brick to building your dream house. You just go, you know, one brick at a time, eventually you'll get there. So we're gonna head home right now and start whipping up some snacks. We are back in the kitchen, my apron's on, pants are off. Guys, we are all guilty of looking for a tasty snack, but dating these days is a bit complicated. So I'm gonna show you guys some healthy alternatives that you can cook up every single day, super easy and high in protein. So we're gonna be whipping up two sweet and two savory options. So let's get into it.
So the first thing that you are gonna need to do is get some Greek yogurt. Cause guys, when is it ever a Will Tennyson recipe when Greek yogurt is not involved? You know what I'm saying? So we're gonna go in one cup of Greek yogurt, which is 233 grams. One for me. Now we're gonna go in with quarter of a cup of PB2, which is 26 grams. And then one scoop of protein of your choice. I would uh, lie and say that you could use any protein, but you can't, you have to use Blue Star. It's just, it's just kind of what works, you know? So I'm using the Coca Mocha peanut butter flavor. It goes super well with the chocolate peanut butter kind of vibe. So you're gonna go with one scoop, which for me is 37 and a half grams. Now we go with a little bit of sweetener, some stevia to taste, just do whatever you want. I generally go a little bit heavier on the, the stevia. Half a cup of some coconut milk, light coconut. I urge you guys not to try to use the fat-free version because when you use the fat-free version, it makes it very, very icy. I've tried it before. It does not work. So use the low fat one. It's still very low calories. Half a cup is only 50 calories, which is 90 grams. And there we go. So that is good to go just like that. But what you can do, this is optional because I don't only eat with my eyes closed all the time. I like to actually see what I'm eating. So I like to add a little bit of the PB2 chocolate one. And I'm just gonna go and I'm gonna drizzle it right on top. So this is just one serving. And you wanna be very careful that you don't put too much water on it. You're just gonna go back and forth and they swirl. So there is the batter that is ready to go. Now we're gonna pop it into the freezer for a little bit to firm up. And I just happen to have one already made to show you guys what it looks like. So the calories for the entire batch, you're looking at 500 calories, 75 grams of protein, 25 grams of carbs, and 11 grams of fat. And I usually cut this into 12 squares, which just makes it 42 calories per square. 40 calories, you cannot go wrong with this. Take a look at that, beautiful. It literally tastes like a Reese's Cups ice cream sandwich. <laughs> Now we are moving on to some of the savory snacks. So the first one we are making is a butternut squash fritter. So just to catch you guys up, I just grated up two and a half cups worth of butternut squash, which came to right around 250 grams. So if you guys can get past grating the squash, the rest of this is gonna be super, super easy. So now we are gonna add one egg to the squash, one whole egg, not just the egg whites. And then we're gonna add one third of a cup of flour of choice. So I'm using coconut flour. I've done this recipe before with almond flour and regular flour, they all seem to work. And then we're gonna go in with some salt and pepper to taste here. I like my things salty. And then a little bit of garlic powder. Feel free to use fresh garlic if you have that on hand. I just like to use a little bit of garlic powder. It makes things a little bit easier. So usually when you're using dried uh, herbs, you wanna use a little bit less than the fresh herbs because they're very concentrated and have a lot of flavor in them. So around two teaspoons. There we go, and now we're gonna mix it up and I have the pan preheating right now. We're gonna place them onto the pan for three minutes on one side then flip them again for another three minutes after that. So three minutes have elapsed and now it's time to flip the fritters and cook them for an additional three minutes. These are the butternut squash fritters, so it makes six. I have one more on the stove right now. I'm gonna top it off with some Greek yogurt and it is just... So I have some rice paper and they're not very high in calories at all. So per three, you're looking at only 70 calories, zero fat, 17 carbs, and only 0.2 grams of protein. So I have a little bowl here filled with some warm water. We're gonna take one at a time, and we're gonna dip it in for around like five seconds. 
one, two, three, four, five. Looks like me and the rice paper have something in common. So I'm gonna take some of the spring mix right here and I'm gonna put it to one side. You wanna leave around one inch. Then we're gonna go with a little bit of some cilantro, a couple of sprigs of some mint, and then we're gonna go with our cucumber. Now we're gonna go with some avocado, like that. And then last but not least, I have some leftover chicken. You're gonna take around two strips in front of the avocado, and now we're gonna roll it up. Roll, and just like you're at Chipotle, you're gonna grab the sides, tuck them in, tuck them in, I'm gonna roll it again. Just like a blunt, guys. And that's one. So now we're gonna make a bunch of those, and then that is such a refreshing, high in protein snack. Super delicious. Again, you can put whatever you want in them. You can do, do shrimp. Shrimp is great. Shrimp with uh, some mangoes and chili pepper. Um, I've done some uh, those rice noodles with some peanut sauce. Super, super good. Very versatile recipe. So we're gonna continue to make all this, and then I'll show you guys the final product. So summer rolls are a game of girth, wrist speed, and who wants it more. It takes a lot of practice, but you will eventually get it. It took me a while until I could roll the perfect summer roll. <laughs> that didn't mean to rhyme right there. So the calories per summer roll, you're looking at 90 calories, 12 grams of protein, seven grams of carbs, and two grams of fat. And usually I like to add some of this Asian sesame uh, dipping sauce. I've done like a homemade PB2 sauce as well. Uh, because these are so low, you can get a little bit lost in the sauce, get a little bit carried away. You know, I don't, I don't mind it, you know? Uh, so it's a good amount of girth. Um, floppy yet very tempting. I'm gonna take a dip. Mm. Tastes super fresh. The mint just does it. You get the creaminess of the avocado. These are super delicious. And then I'm gonna try one of these butternut squash fritters. perfect snack that will fill you up and won't make you go and binge and you know raid and grab some cereal and stuff like that. So I am gonna wrap up the video here. I'm gonna have all the recipes in the description. Try them out, let me know what you guys think. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a like. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and I'll see you guys in the next one.